Now, all these different magazines, uh, Life and Time, they've been having a good ride. And they're, they're coexisting with radio, but then, remember, if you remember what we talked about before, um, once, the, uh, once World War II ended, uh, the television really started to uh, take hold. They remember they had to wait for television because of the war. Well, this is also another medium after the war. Um, television, once again, it, it starts it starts up in the late 40s, really starts its rise in the 50s. Um, and this takes away some of the uh, the interest of these other magazines. These magazines, they're not as, they're not as interested. Why? Because remember, radio was able to coexist with uh, with magazines because they had the advantage of the visual aspect of the beautiful images that you were seeing. Now we got television, they're taking away from that and they're moving. So it's moving pictures and so it's it's harder to deal with uh, to deal with the with this n this new technology. So you start seeing like the uh, time and life and readers digest and all these their circulation starts going down television starts going up but at the same time since television starts going up let's create uh, um, let's create a whole new magazine about the television these they start to get more programs one of these things on remember there's no DVR so you can't really record it um, so you have to know when certain things are on so this TV Guide is born, and TV Guide for the very longest time was a top-rated magazine. It seemed to be one of the top-selling magazines for decades and decades and decades. Um, it's gone down somewhat since then, but this is where they first got their start. Um, it's it's a whole new medium. People want to know about what's going on, on television. Um, tell us, it gave you a schedule when things are uh, in, in, in your area. So it's even that was another big uh, as, aspect. They uh, they tailored each area, to each uh, edition to each area because each area, each market had different uh, channels. So they had to uh, to uh, to deal with that, and they had to understand that. So that they catered to their to the users, um, and and uh, so we start seeing. Uh, uh, long mainstays like Saturday Evening Post, Life, and Look Magazine, which we didn't talk about before. Um, that, was a, that was another magazine that was very, very popular in the time, the same time as the Post and Life. Um, they can't keep up. They can't keep up with television. They can't keep up with all the new technology. Um, they, 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 were, they were losing money. Um, Life did come back. Saturday Evening Post is still is around. Um, a lot of magazines seem to rise and fall. Hey, they're back. They're gone. Um, we'll say our evening post is still is back again. They've just taken it to the like to the internet. So uh, with uh, with the way uh, they understand the new situation and they've adapted, um, and also with uh, other things such as uh, it would cost more to deliver, um, and they were losing money to television because of advertising, um, and it. Because of all of this, um, as, as you can look at any magazine uh, rack, um, most magazines now seem to be women's mag magazines, uh, focusing on a number of different topics uh, that that are targeted uh, for 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 women. And we can see we're going to want a, a side by side uh, comparison to uh, from 1972 to 2014, which is six years ago, but still somewhat uh, recent and you go you look back and forth uh, at the circulation readers digest in 1972 was the top rated uh, uh, circ circulated uh, magazine out there as opposed to the top two today are AARP magazines and no I am not old enough to get that quite yet heck I started getting things for them uh, when I started turning 30 so and 50 is the number for that um, but uh, it, but you can see some see a couple of uh, different uh, uh, magazines that are still popular with us better homes and gardens um, their circulation's gone down slightly it's only about 300,000 um, on circulation for that so that was uh, something that stood the test of time National Geographic um, they have less obviously cut in half 
but they're still in that number seven spot. Um, Reader's Digest is still in the top ten, but not nearly as popular. Um, so we're, we're seeing, but he's seeing a lot of, uh, and heck, Game Informer. Even though you don't really, a lot of, a couple of students already said they don't pay for it. It comes with uh, their uh, their membership with uh, video game, gaming, playing GameStop and all that kind of thing. Um, but it's still their circulation and it shows the, the time, uh, the difference in the times and People Magazine as well, Women's Day. Um, you see kind of a recession of magazines today. And so some stand, stood the test of time, some have uh, gone away, um, and some have just adapted. Which brings us to People Magazine. Okay, People Magazine, uh, it was more, uh, it focuses on more celebrities, music, movies, um, general pop culture. Um, it became one of those uh, grocery store by the register, magazine rack by in the grocery store, people take a look at it. Um, and there are other types like uh, Us Weekly, stuff like that have become more popular. But People Magazine, um, with the first successful uh, magazine of its type in a very long time, um, and this that's in, in the, the mid-1970s. Um, partially you're looking at people want to kind of just get away from remember that's during uh, Watergate they want to get away from all the negative news they're hearing all the time they're coming off of Vietnam um, Vietnam's just ending um, you got Watergate going on people are in a sense of malaise and they want a getaway and People Magazine gave them that getaway and People Magazine is still going on and they still have lots of features you hear about every year Sexy uh, Man Alive and all sorts of uh, things that they do has become part of our culture. Time goes by, we've gone from the mid-70s, now we're going um, into the 90s. Uh, you know, People Magazine is doing very well during that time in the 80s. Um, internet comes along, not, newspapers are dying, magazines really are having a lot of the same issues, and they realize we have to get online. We have to put this in a venue uh, that's gonna that we're gonna succeed in because this is this is the next stop. This is what people want. This is what we have to uh, if we're gonna survive. So they decided this this could be perfect for what we do. This new technology could really work well for for the magazine format. Um, and it's this is and also gave them a, a new venue because if you think about it, when you think about magazines, they're not really breaking stories. But from a technology standpoint giving them that breaking news quality that they didn't have before because they pre-produced their their magazine put it out it'd be it would be occasional monthly or whatever bi-monthly or whatever they the way they did it here they could just go online they can be they have the ability to to uh, break news as it's happening it's something they never did before um, and so in that way it it, it grew um, some aspects of their uh, operations because now they have a whole new venue and they have that breaking news uh, quality to it. So that also uh, grew their uh, staff and uh, grew uh, opportunities and created new jobs. Over the years we start seeing specialization in the types of magazines that are produced. You had your advertiser uh, type that focused more on the consumer and certain businesses or trades and or farming, this is more the uh, business side and economic side of, of the population that have uh, certain businesses and certain industries have certain magazines that specifically focus on um, that industry. Uh, so I come from the television side, so broadcasting and cable was a uh, long time uh, uh, magazine that only people within the industry uh, really understood. Uh, and they specifically focused on things that only people in that industry uh, were really interested uh, that that had that wanted to know what was going on and what was uh, the trends for that industry. And then there's the other types of magazine. This is where you deal with uh, demographics. It could be it could be age, it could be gender, it could be different uh, different groups, uh, ethnic groups. Because and you you'll see that in cable as well. Uh, magazines and cable cable you have different uh, niche niche uh, channels and magazines you have different niche magazines because lots of different interests out there it could be about sports it could be tabloids it could be 
um, entertainment. It could be movies. It could be any number of uh, topics. It could be chess. I mean, it's it could be any number of uh, different things you're talking about. Um, so this is where we start seeing a big uh, specialization. And they, they have your target audience. It could be between men and women, different sports and different topics. It could be for specific ages. Certain age groups like uh, certain things. Heck, AARP, we saw it before. That's only, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, specialized uh, age group. It's all about that age group, AARP. You have to be 50 or older to be part of AARP. And then you have the elite magazines such as uh, Vanity Fair or and The New Yorker and things like that. Um, that, that dealt with a very specific uh, group and the interest that these people had. Minority uh, publications are out there, such as uh, Jet Magazine and also uh, Ebony as well, both major uh, African-American publications that dealt with culture and issues of the African-American community. Uh, at The Advocate dealt with the LGBT community. Still are both, they're all still out there and then of course there are supermarket tabloids some say they're no good no better than uh to wrap fish in sometimes but they're still there your supermarket tabloids the inquirer the globe and they have some crazy things that you see in there the weekly world news the immortal bat boy so so you're seeing very specialized uh specialized magazines going on out there and then this is where we also start seeing some some big uh, magazine chains go out there. And of course, as we know, with the uh, in the world we live in today, 96 Telecommunications Act, a lot of these uh, major magazine corporations are just part of a bigger media conglomerate. Um, Time owns a lot of different uh, magazines out there. Um, Hearst, we talked about that. William Randolph Hearst before. This, the name is still out there. Um, owns yeah, newspapers, TV, magazines. Um, and the Meredith Corporation, they deal with a lot of the women's magazines out there, home-related magazines. All major uh, players in the, uh, the the magazine industry still going uh, pretty strong there. Um, you can also have Rodale. Rodale is actually up in uh, Pennsylvania, not uh, in the uh, north uh, East uh, area, Pennsylvania, dealing with a lot of uh, what health and wellness things, um, and it, a lot of these magazines have their own niches, their own uh, markets that have gone across the not only the country but the world, um, and they do have uh, lots. A lot of these magazines also what they have called magalogs, they're magazines, but there are also ways for you to order. Um, whatever it is you want to order. I know we have Amazon now, but before we had Amazon, um, they had these magalogs that uh, would be a way for people to just order lots and lots of stuff that they see in these magazines. Um, but lots of these chains are at a variety of different magazines going on. Which we now see uh, circulation of some uh, magazines uh, as we uh, look who was uh, in, so we have, you got your circulation, you got U.S. population and the number of Mar Americans per each in circulation. Um, I mean, we started off with Ladies Home Journal, still around, um, but, you know, so they uh, they were the, the leading one there. And not much, it, they reached a million in 1903, which was a big deal. And we see the Saturday Evening Post that held the title for quite a while there um, from, the, from the 20s into the 50s. And that's just like said, as soon as the 50s hit, we see TV Guide. Television's the big thing now, and uh, they they take the uh, they take the uh, the title there. But then we see Reader's Digest, and then, as we said before, AARP um, taking the taking the to taking the uh, title uh, nowadays um, could also have to do with uh, of the uh, the generation as it's getting older. Now magazines, they have, you know, they've made a major dent in this uh, in this industry. Magazines have been a major part of mass communication. They're not newspapers, they're not television, they're not radio, uh, but they've they've made their own mark and they've been part of American culture. Um, we we have seen 
our society go from what was considered a producer society to a consumer society? So if you think back in the day, it was they were first they were uh, yeah the craftspeople and uh, farmers and, and industry uh, producing things and now. People uh, are more buying things, so if you look at the magazines today, that's why we have so many advertisements in there because they know people will want to buy stuff and they read about this and they want to, they want to buy it. So we've seen it transition over to a more consumer-based uh, uh, model. Another aspect and very important aspect is um, the magazines still to this day, and even back when they're muckraking days, they they give us those in-depth stories that we might not get in some other forms so they they say they focus on one story at a time but just in a when you take when you do that story you can really get into the the details of it uh, when you might not be able to get into the details with uh, time limitations or space limitations in other uh, in other formats such as even television news your average story that you see is a minute and a half maybe two minutes your average newspaper article not very long either Television news can have longer ones, but they, I mean, once again, they, the longer things that you'll see will be in a television magazine form, and that's the same as the print magazine form. They have that added advantage of having more, having more time to put in to produce an article and a story about some very important things that need to be talked about. And these are the, the magazines have always made uh, an impact, even from the, the beginning of their, their, beginning of their history where they the heck they started with uh, political uh, magazines up until today I mean this is they still have a very big part to deal and a very big part in what we call a free uh, and open and democratic society.